Blackburn Rovers return to league action. This time they're hitting the road off to the Majeskis to take on Strugglers Reading. We'll talk about it next. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. This time looking forward to Rovers match up against Reading at Majeski, And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button and keep your bang out to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, woo, football related. We're going to all here under one roof. Now let's get stuck into the thick of things and talk about it. It is the match this Wednesday up against Reading at the Majeski Stadium on Valentine's Day Eve, boys and girls. That's right. Uh, Reading obviously changed manager since the last time we met them earlier uh, in a 2-2 draw at Ewood. Uh, no more Paul Clements. It is now Jose Manuel Gomez uh, steering Reading in the right direction, perhaps. Uh, however, last season they did finish 20th. Um, can they improve on that? Can they stay in the division? Because it is looking a little bit ominous at the moment. The key man for me uh, this week will be Mo Barrow. That's right, ex-rover Mo Barrow. We'll talk about some ex-rovers um, a little bit later on. And the last time that these two sides met at the Majeski ended up being a 3-1 win for Reading on April 4th, 2017. And I believe the gaffer, Tony Mowbray, was in charge. Now, over the years, two sides have played each other 20 times. Uh, Rovers winning seven of them. We've drawn nine and we've lost Four. Let's jump into the thick of things and take a look at the starting 11s. First and foremost, we'll take a look at uh, my Reading lineup. They actually play in a similar formation to us uh, with Martinez in goal, Blackett, Moore, Manmianza, Yadom at right back, Ruminotta, Swift, Baker, Barrow, McCleary, and obviously Bod Varson, the main man up top. They do have some other options as well. Oliveira is out. Obviously, a horrific facial injury by Tyron Mings uh, a couple of weeks back. Kind of similar to the David Ryer incident. And that six-fingered ex-banjo playing weirdo, Jay Rodriguez, a while back. Anyway, let's take a look at the stats for Reading. Bod Varson tops pops with seven goals. Uh, Maita has seven goals. Baldock has five. Swift has two. As for the yellows, uh, Yadam has seven. Swift has five. Mieta has five. And Andy Romano has five yellows. And the two goals. Guys with red cards is O'Shea and Blackett. Let's take a look at the five uh, last five results for Reading. They're coming into this again. Just it just seems to be the way of the way of the world at the moment with the Rovers playing up against one of the form. Well, I would say the form tie size, but their form is pretty decent. Uh, their last two results have been draws. Uh, most recently up against Steve Bruce's Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough. That was on Saturday the 9th of Feb. Before that, uh, second of, the second of February up against Aston Villa uh, at the Majeski and also up as a nil nil draw. Before that, they took on Bolton at the Macron. 29th of Jan ended up being a 1-1 draw. Uh, the last uh, result that they lost was all the way back in the 19th of January up against Derby County uh, at, the, at Derby's ground, 2-1. And then all the way back, 12th of Jan. The last time they won was all the way back uh, against Nottingham Forest, 2-0. Next five fixtures uh, for Reading look like this. Obviously, Rovers this weekend or this Wednesday. Then they take on Sheffield United on the 16th of Feb. Then it's back to the Majeski on the 23rd, up against Rotherham. Into the month of March, key couple of key games here, up against Ipswich Town at Portman Road. That's on the 2nd of March. And then they'll take on Wigan back at the Majeski at the 9th of March. Anyway, take a look at Rovers' expected lineup. I expect at least two changes. For me, as a, on a personal level, uh, Raya between the sticks. Amari Bell come to back into it. I think Williams was a little... I think we lacked uh, positivity going forward with Williams. He did have a couple of efforts, headers um, from corners and set pieces, but he didn't didn't really take full advantage of his start. Uh, Rodwell should remain alongside Mulgrew and Nyambe, preferably to come back in in place of Bennett. Now, that's the that's the catch-22 now. Previously, was, where are you going to stick Mulgrew? Where are we going to stick Elliot Bennett? Um, I think he's going to be on the bench uh, this weekend or this midweek. Uh, Smallwood and Travis in midfield. Dak, Armstrong, Reed, and DG up top. No-brainer there. As for the stats, no changes. Obviously, we didn't score against Bristol City. Uh, Dak still tops pops with 14 goals. Graham has 11. Mulgrew has 8. Armstrong has 8. As for the discipline, Lennon has 8 yellows. Bennett has 6. Uh, Evans has 6. Smallwood has 6. And into the red, Smallwood and Williams both have a red card to their name. As for the last five fixtures, uh, results for us obviously not great. Two back to back, back to back defeats. First and foremost, up against Bristol City on Saturday, we lost 1 0. Before that, it was the collapse against Brentford 5 2, and that was at uh, Griffin Park. That was on the second of Feb. Before that, though, we beat Hull at Ewood 26th of January 3 0, and before that, we beat Ipswich 2 0 at Ewood Park um, on the 19th of January. And then also, we did lose to Newcastle after extra time 4 2 at Ewood. Park. Anyway, the next five fixtures for Rovers. Um, very winnable. Uh, very interesting games for us. Definitely uh, uh, a chance for us to get some points on the board. If we can come out of the next two games with six points, I'll be very, very happy with it. And maybe we can start to talk about playoffs again. But realistically, 
They are on, on, on pause. We're muting. We're muting the playoff talk for the time being. Up against Red, uh, Reading, obviously, this week. Then we take on Borough on Sunday, early kickoff. Then it's Birmingham at St. Andrews, 23rd of Feb. Uh, and then it is Rotherham at the New York Stadium on the 2nd of March. And then it is the crunch one against uh, Preston North End, 9th of March. It looks like it's a noon kickoff. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at some of the characteristics that we're going to need to be aware of, obviously. Um, keeping possession of the ball is very weak for Rovers. Uh, also, we seem to create a lot of chances using through through balls, uh, shooting from direct free kicks, and stealing the ball from opposition. They are strengths. A running strengths creating chances using through balls and stealing the ball from opposition as well. So it's kind of comparable. Um, we we often seem to be doing a lot of long balls these days um, and attack down the left hand side, which uses uh, Armstrong's pace. Uh, Reading also seem to go down the left or prefer to go down the left. Take a lot of long shots, uh, short passes and attempt a lot through balls. They do rotate their 11 quite consistently. We don't really, it says rotate their 11, but realistically we don't. Uh, over the last six encounters between the two sides, it looks like this. Obviously earlier in the season at Ewood, we drew 2-2. Uh, prior to that, we lost uh, against Reading 3-1. In fact, we've got to go back all the way to the 7th of May, uh, the last time that we beat Reading. That was a 3-1 win. I think DG scored at least one of the goals. Um, so our track record against Reading is not the greatest. Um, but going into this as well, let's take a look at some of the uh, the away form for Rovers. Our last away victory uh, was against Millwall, and that was on the um, 12th of January. But bef before that, or in amongst that, it's not good. It's like one win in six. As for Reading's home form, they come into this one win in six as well. Uh, so it's going to be one of those... Tough, tough games, I think, for Rovers. Um, it's definitely winnable, um, but I also think we can lose this. And if we lose this, then I think not. we, we won't just mute the playoff talk. We can probably uh, eliminate it. Meanwhile, what else is going to go on this midweek in the old championship? Quite a few tasty games to look forward to. Obviously, leaders, um, Norwich, I think they're top of the pops now. They take on Preston. Leeds take on Swansea in a difficult game as well. West Brom up against Notts Forest. Bristol City, who beat us last weekend. Up against QPR. Mill will take on Chef Wed. Hull against Rotherham. Birmingham against Bolton, uh, Sheffield United up against Middlesbrough, another tasty one as well. Wigan up against Stoke and Ipswich against Derby, Brentford against Villa. So a lot of games, uh, tasty ones as well that could affect the state of play in the table. Let's take a look at the table. Here they are, Norwich are flying high, two points clear of Leeds, Sheffield United, West Brom, Middlesbrough and Borough or, uh, and Bristol City occupy the playoff spots. Uh, Ipswich, Bolton and today's or this week's opponents, Reading in the bottom three, but a win for them could see them rise out of the drop zone and push Rotherham in there. As for Rovers, we come into this in 13th spot. A win for us though could see as high as 8th depending on what goes on elsewhere. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the stats here. Top goal scorers and the chat in the championship it is Billy Sharp with 22 goals after his stunning hat-trick. Timu Puki and Tammy Abraham are hot on his heels. 20 goals. Che Adams has 19 also after a hat-trick and Neil Mappe is now cut off adrift. 17 goals. As for key assist makers, Pablo Hernandez has 11. Jack Czekowicz has 10. Conor Huron has 9. Jota has 9. And Saeed Benarama. So so this is obviously a crucial game for Rovers. If we can bounce back this midweek, it will set up a tasty game back at Ewood Park against Middlesbrough with a somber longer and co. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Reading. Here are just three of them. Zurab Kieran out of a bit of Italy. Former, I think he was a Georgian, something like that. Georgian defender, formerly of Reading. Blue and white hoops up against them. And he was also in the blue and white halves of Blackburn Rovers. What else we got? This guy, Danny Guthrie. I think he was definitely in his in his youthful time um, with uh, Reading. And then he also donned the blue and white halves. And also the red and white uh, away jerseys for Blackburn Rovers. He's now, where is he? Blackpool, perhaps? And how about this guy? Jason Roberts, that's right. Goal scoring machine for Reading, and he also scored a quite a few crucial goals for Rovers in the blue and white halves. Now, if you want to check out a full list of all the players that play for both Blackburn Rovers and Reading, head over to my WordPress site. Detail to that puppy in the old description below. So you've heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. Now, what you really want to hear is what the opposition fans have got up their sleeve, and I'm joined by James Salter, who is a diehard Reading fan, and is with me live on Skype. So first of all, you know, this is our first time that we've connected through the uh, through the channel. Um, so for my small corner of the YouTube audience, if you know I'm telling them a little bit about you and why on earth you support Reading. Um, I'm just Reading. I've just been my local team. I grew up in that area. My friends kind of got me into it about um, four or five years ago. Went to my first game. We lost 2-0 to Brentford. But um, 
been stuck with them ever since. Well, yeah, stuck with them ever since. Stuck with them ever since. Yeah, there's been some good times and bad times with Reading over the years. Um, but what we're going to do now is talk about the current season for the most part. Uh, I kind of do like a mid-season overview to, to, to kind of educate any Rovers fans out there and also maybe inform some Reading boys of your opinion of uh, Reading this season. Obviously, it's not going the greatest at the moment, but it's still a lot of football to be played. So, so obviously, the season is, is you know over the halfway mark now and maybe we can kind of get a good overview of, of Reading. But who has been your, uh, despite the, the troubled times, who's been your best player so far? Um, well, in terms of best players, we're probably going to go for um, Andy Ren Renamoto. He's a... Um... Uh, he's an academy graduate and he plays uh, primarily in central midfield. Um, he's doing very well this season. It's been his breakthrough kind of season. He's definitely a fan favourite. And week in, week out, he's been very, very solid. He uh, proved himself in the Man United game as well when we were uh, 2 defeat. He played very well there. OK, cool. Yeah, I've actually, uh, I did uh, I did notice, that, uh, I know it's a completely separate subject, but on Football Manager, he does turn out to be very good. So, uh, yeah, he's definitely one to keep an eye out. OK, what about, OK, we all have them. We all have players that still get selected, but they could often be garbage. Who's been the worst player for you this season? I think when I go with the donkey, uh, he's been dropped actually recently by Gomez, but uh, Chris Gunter, he's a um, Welsh, uh, Welsh international, but it's got to the point where uh, I think we were carrying more sentiment than he's not, he's not, he's been struggling to carry his own weight recently. He makes um, silly mistakes, but, uh, and the fans are kind of a bit iffy with him recently as well. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got a couple of guys that have, uh, they're not really proved themselves from over recent time. Okay. You kind of touched on Riminot a little bit, but is there anyone else coming through the ranks that we should keep an eye on any other youngsters? Oh, of course. Well, Liam Kelly is, I mean, he's more than the first team player now and he's still, he's still very young. He's, um, Early early twenties, and he's a great little great little Irish midfielder, very very creative, and he could be he could if he gets the chance, he could definitely be up there with one of the better players. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think okay. of some other players. Um, well, I think you've changed managers as well this season. Obviously, you started with Clements, and now you have got this other fella in, which I'm I'm pretty new. I don't really know much too much about him, but um, has there been a lot of transfer activity since the start of the season and and in January? Who has been your best signing from the, your, the transfer business? Uh, best signing Oof. over this season. Um, this, this season, I would probably say our, our new right back Andy Yeardom has been very very solid when he's needed to be. Um, he's carry he carries himself forward. He, very, he's very creative, which is a flair maybe gone to lap. But he's also reasonably solid in defence. Doesn't make any, doesn't make that many mistakes. So I would say he's probably been our best signing. Okay, now on the opposite end of the spectrum, who's been who's been an absolute oh, shambles that you can't, can't believe you paid money or loaned a guy in and he's been he's been worthless. We we've had a couple. Don't worry, we we all we all have. Do you know what? I don't think there's been anyone that's been like concrete horrendous. I think um, there's been players that haven't really given themselves a chance. Like uh, uh, Ajari, I think he's from how you pronounce his name. I still can't pronounce his name. He's been all right. He hasn't really shone through. But um, And then, of course, we've got Martinez who's just come through. And we've got Oliveira, who's, well, he's meant to be a class signing of Stripe. He's going to help us work away at the table. But he, uh, he took one to the face last week. By, um, yeah. So he's um, he's recovering at home with a broken nose and this that and the other. So um, I wouldn't say we have a concrete worst signing, but they're just maybe some players that just need to work on themselves a little bit more. Let's let's, let's elaborate that on that Oliveira fella. How how many games did he actually play before this this collision? And we had a similar one earlier with uh, with uh, uh, Jay Rodriguez and our goalkeeper, big boot to the face. He was out for two or three weeks, um, and I did see the video and it did look pretty nasty. Uh, the Tyron Mings fella, but uh, how 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 many games did he play, and, and you know how long is the, the he likely to be out? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I think it was I think it was uh, two or three games. I think he played before before um, the incident yes uh, last week. Um, and broken nose, uh, be out with uh, probably up to a few weeks. Um, he was released from hospital end of last um, end end of last weekend, but he has been at home recovering. Um, he's got this nice big bandage covering his nose. Uh, with a few stitches as well for his face. Yeah, yeah, it was. It doesn't look good. Uh, the fate, yeah, uh, it's just horrific, horrific injury. Okay, let's let's go back on back on trial. But who's been your your? I know there's been the best players out there, but who's been your favourite? Who do you always think look forward to seeing on the team sheet uh, week in week out? Oh, just me and my mates got this. Uh, we we love uh, John Daly Bodvast and our strike. He doesn't. Uh, he, he's all right. He play. <laughs> he's he's not the best, but he does play. We do love to see him kicking around. Um, 
especially I think one of the best moments we saw was um, start of last start of last calendar year. We got a hat trick against Stevenage in the FA Cup third round. We were we were very very happy with that. But um, no, he's just he's just an all round solid solid player, and a lot of, most of the fans love him as well. So I'd go with uh, Bod Varson. Yeah, I think he was also he was he was also one of the um, only Championship uh, players to feature in the World Cup last year. Um, okay, so your favourite player, the Bod Varson. What about who's the man who's likely to cause a bit of problems? Maybe get himself a red card or six. Uh, who's the tough nut, uh, Majeski? Uh, looking at probably uh, one of Paul McShane or Liam Moore. Uh, McShane, we've got a we've got a chant about McShane that if you throw a brick at him, he'll add you back in the face. So I'll probably go with McShane. He, he seems to he's a well established player. He's played at t- played teams like Hull City, and he's played for like some solid mid table Premier League teams. He's just one of those. He's one of those Irishmen that will just like that, he'll have you for breakfast if you go anywhere near him. He's a very he's a solid he's a solid and well respected um, defender. That's that's what we all need, and we and we're actually on the hunt for with centre backs. We got uh, some makeshift midfielders playing as centre backs these days. Um, okay, all about who's the who's the guy who gets too many plaudits that you think is he doesn't really deserve. He's like you know a little bit too over. Who's the most overrated player for you? So this one, when you when you gave me this question, I was like, I'm not quite sure because I think I don't know. I think at, when he when he used to play more Gareth McCleary, but um, I I don't I couldn't really pinpoint. All right, okay. I suppose Mo Barrow, as great as he was at Swansea City, he had a very good season last year. This season, he's been very hit and miss. I wouldn't say he's a very an out and out winger. That he not sorry, he's not the um, he's not the out and out winger that we're used to seeing in the Premier League when he played for Swansea. He's been um, I don't know. He's been he's been kept quiet by a lot of Championship players. I suppose the physicality of the league as well. He hasn't been able to thrive as much as we'd like him to. Mm-hmm. So I would probably say Mo Barrow. However, um, prior to the appointment of uh, Jose Gomez under Paul Clement, uh, Sean Aluko absolutely dreadful. He was bre- uh, was brilliant at Holland for Holland for them. Great little great little pacey striker, but he just didn't carry his weight for the majority. When we first when Yapstam first signed signed him, he wasn't like, wasn't anything to shout about. But he's just he just flops under Clement. But since Gomez has brought him in, his performance has picked up. So we he's one of those again one of those hit and miss players, I suppose. Okay, well, I think I've outlined Bar- Mo Barrow as my my danger man for this week. Uh, for this week, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll we'll see because he was ex Rover and he's very pacey and he can cause the. He's very skillful on his day, but um, yeah, yeah. I'd say he has. He does have. He does have some. He does. He, I'm not saying he's a quality player, but I just don't think he's gelled with the team as much as we would have liked. Right. Okay. But he's now, still a brilliant. He's still a brilliant little. Yes, he is. And he's still got time on his side, still young. OK, what about on the other uh, the spectrum? Who doesn't get a lot of plaudits? And you think, you know, they, like he might be doing a lot of the donkey work in midfield or uh, one of your wing backs, maybe. Anyone who doesn't get a lot of plaudits that they should do? I actually think it was the goalkeeper, Vito Manone, before he was, um, he's been shipped off to uh, Minnesota now on loan. But prior to, um, at the start of the season, he was actually playing quite well between the six. But um, manager dropped him and he's kind of gone out the window. So I'd probably say Vito Manone. OK. OK. Um, now, you did say you, you've been a, a supporter for, for a few years. Uh, if you're going back through the archives, uh, f- you know, maybe during your time or maybe even before from the record books or anything, but who's who's your favourite ever player for Reading? In the time that I um, watched them, oh, probably you've got to say Ali al was our goalkeeper and um, he was... He was the first player since Phil Parkinson, I believe, to get our player of the year two years running. And the 2015, 16, 2016, 17 season, he was very, very crucial in our uh, promotion push for the uh, for the playoffs. They made some absolutely insane games. In fact, there was this one most the one that stands out most in memory was a two 0 win away at Sheffield Wednesday. He made like something like 15 odd ridiculous saves, um, and we ended up winning two 0 in a in a game that we didn't deserve to win at all. But he was just absolutely on fire. And the insane thing is, he's in his mid. He was in his. He's in his mid. Uh, he's now. He's now gone to um, Saudi Arabia to play for. Um, uh, Al Hilal, um, and he's doing well there. But uh, for for us, he was probably one of the yeah. He was probably my favourite player, and he was also probably the fans' favourite as well for a long period of time as well. Yeah, I think I, I do remember him. Yeah, and he was yeah, impressive despite his his uh, later footballing years. Okay, what about if there if you could steal one just one person from anywhere in the Championship, whether it's at Leeds, whether it's at Bristol City, or even Ipswich, if you could steal anybody, who would you take? One player. Um, one player. Oh, see, um, it's between. Uh, I've got two in my mind. 
I'll okay. give you two. Um, you, you can, can have two. two. You give me two, will you? I, I'd say Jack Grealish for the creativity and the absolute flair he, he provides for Aston Villa. I'd love him in our midfield. And then I'd love him to be providing um, the prolific Billy Sharp at the moment. He's playing very well for Sheffield United. He's a very goal nabber. He gets goals when you need when the team needs him to. I think Reading kind of lack that kind of player going forwards. I think we need that player who can just grab us some little, like maybe like 1-0 or 2-0 wins. Like our last two games have been um, stalemate, stalemate uh, goal of scores. So I think we need just a strike who can kind of provide that kind of option for us. Yep, good picks, good picks. Okay, so it, it, this is we're getting to the nitty gritty now. Well, obviously, not not been the greatest season, uh, you, but so you're surprising me being where you are in the table. Um, but where do you ultimately think you'll finish this season? I think I don't think we'll get relegated. I think we're probably be looking at about like a 19th or a 20th place this season, which is a real shame. But um, I would much rather survive in the league than get relegated. Um, I know the majority of our fans thinking, okay, we're going down. A lot of the league thinks we'll be one of three to be relegated but I, I i think we've got a very good chance of survival if we just if we push ourselves i i agree i don't think i think there are worse teams than you and you guys have turned a corner as well recently with a couple i think i just looked at the form and i think you've lost one in six maybe so that's not too bad especially when down there you gotta be a little bit scrappy and nil nils you know they're not they're obviously not brilliant but they're better than you know, not getting any points. Um, okay, uh, I'm not too sure on, on some teams' local rivalries, but is there anyone a team that you really despise in the championship, and why? Can't be Blackburn. We're gonna, I'm gonna mute you if it's Blackburn, but uh, but uh, probably not. In the championship, our closest rival is probably QPR. We've just got a little bit of a hatred between them. It's just how they are there. We're classifying them as the the fake hoops, the fake cars, and all they wear our blue and white colours. They're just. We don't think they're fit for the blue and white and all that kind of stuff. So I'd probably say Queen's Park Rangers in the championship, yes. They're, okay. not the, they're not the team we out and out despise, but in the championship, that's the closest you're going to get. Ed, educate me a bit on that. Who's the who's the ultimate rivals? Is it Watford or what? I think Watford. Swindon Town. Swindon Town, that's right. It is, it is more, I guess, geographically uh, in the same. Because I went to actually a, a, a Reading-Watford game and it was billed. This was years ago. This was in the 90s. There was... Uh, it was billed as a bit of a rivalry. I think they're both in the same division at the same time, um, but maybe I was yeah, just. I think in, terms, in, terms, in terms of recent, in terms of recent rivalry with them being in the same division, probably Fulham, considering our playoff like kind of um, kind of spat in the same season. They kind of they thrashed us five nil at Craven Cottage, um, and then we had this little bit of like we just Fulham fans don't like us, and we just didn't like Fulham. It just kind, of, I suppose. I don't know. It's just, it was just the fact that we and then we ended up beating them one nil in the in the playoff second leg two one and I could get to take us through to the final. Kind of rubbed salt a little bit into the wounds more there. Okay. 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 Now here we go. The final. The final one. The money question here. What's the final score going to be Wednesday? Reading against Rovers in the chat. I'm going to be bold and say at home, considering you haven't beaten us in the Dayski for a fair few years, I'm going to go with a uh, a two one win. Uh, to Reading but anyway thank you for your time and hopefully we can catch your feedback after the game on Wednesday night is that alright? That's perfectly fine I'll um, give you a shout Okay until then I'm going to let you get out of here Now you've heard a little bit what I'm about to say about the match and you've heard what the opposition fans are about to say about the match now what you really want to hear is what Cass the Cat's got up her sleeve what she predicted for the Rovers Reading game at the Majeski. here she comes now That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a good old thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button to keep you back up to date with all things Black and Rose related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. And while I still have you, make sure you drop your own predictions and also what you think is going to happen this midweek up against Reading in the old comment section below. Can Rovers get back to winning ways or will it be the start of a revolution for Reading as they try to get themselves back up the table? Back to back draws for them, back to back defeats for us. What's in store this week? Well, uh, we'll talk all about it in the review on Wednesday. And I'm looking forward to it as well. Anyway, I'm going to let you get out of it until I speak to you again. Thumbs up, subscribe.
Let's bounce. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope.